So this one's kind of strange, but I haven't really had time or the occasion to be scared for myself on any calls. The worst fear I have had surrounding an incident was a call that I didn't get to respond to, but rather my husband did. It was a page out for a wildland fire. It went on for hours, which is no great surprise under certain conditions. I had no real worries until I heard and saw the medivac helicopter coming in. The only people in that immediate vicinity were firefighters, which meant that it was either one of our guys or one of the neighboring department's guys getting transported, and it was a bad, bad feeling. Several firefighters were ultimately transported off on that one. One was airlifted out while the rest were by ambulance. Everyone made it out fine, but it was a horrible evening and the feeling of existential helplessness not being there was worse than anything I've ever felt. We've had a few that involved being paged out with tornadoes and flooding in progress that were fucking white knucklers. The last thing you think of when becoming a firefighter is the possibility that you might be drowned on the way to a scene. Obligatory, I'm not a firefighter, but my grandfather was a firefighter, and he had this one call that I think stuck with him more than all of the others. Essentially, he was the first one on the scene on a call for a young child that was unresponsive found in a swimming pool. He almost had the child stable when the paramedics arrived on scene and more or less pushed him away with no regard to what he had done to help this kid. The child ended up dying, and my grandfather felt somewhat responsible because he didn't fight as hard as he felt he should have with the paramedics who mangled the entire situation. Up until the year that he died, he was still visiting that family and dropping off meals on regular basis. I can't even imagine the feeling of losing a child you felt that you could have saved. A few years ago, I was called to a structure fire. I was the first truck on scene, there was heavy smoke visible everywhere. I walk up to the house and there's a guy that just comes out from the back of the house smoking a cigarette. He tells us that he doesn't want his house saved. Disregarding this, I mask up and make entry and out of the blue, this guy comes running up from behind me and tries to stab me with a dull steak knife. Turns out he was on meth and his girlfriend had overdosed on heroin in the house, so in a panic he torched the place and didn't want us to put the fire out. Thank God for my thick ass bunker coat. Didn't feel a thing and didn't penetrate the coat. Duh. Skinny meth head ended up getting tackled by my entire truck company. Was one of the more interesting calls for sure. When I was a firefighter training for Army Corps, the first story we ever heard was about a guy that lit 15 acres of woodland on fire just because. When they finally found the dude who started the fires, he was jerking off right by the flames. <laughs> I forgot to add that this guy was responsible for numerous fires in the area, and it was never conclusive if uh, his fun times were attempts to put out the fires. <laughs> Still makes me laugh. I'm a firefighter slash EMT, and this was probably the worst call for me. So we had to run on a difficulty breathing call. My partner and I arrive on the scene, but start to have a hard time breathing due to the putrid smell of shit. I see the PT, who seems to be high as balls, lying in the corner. We stand her up, and her pants are clearly full of shit. We walk her to the ambulance, and I begin to start an IV on her. I grab her arm to find a vein, and as usual, I place it on my lap. But my partner shouts at me to wait, then throws a sheet in my lap. The woman had shit all over her hands and arms that I hadn't spotted earlier. She had been playing in it. Then I saw her smile. Don't do meth, kids. I was on a junior firefighter program when I was 15 in my small town. I'm talking a really small town, like probably only 400 people. This one night, a guy was heading home in his pickup truck flipped the truck, wasn't wearing a seatbelt, and I think you can guess what happened. While the truck was in the air, he managed to half hang his way out the side window. The truck landed on its side and slid for about 100 feet, so there was body and car parts everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. Smeared, splattered, anything you can imagine. 
Being a small town in the middle of BFE, there is no cleanup crew at night. So, who do they call to clean up this mess? The fire department. So I'm walking around at night with a flashlight, rubber gloves, and a bag, just picking up pieces of this drunk guy. It's not like they forced me at gunpoint. The fire department was all volunteer work, and I said I would help. It's a dead body, not like I've ever seen one before. But still, I was only 15. I'm a firefighter slash EMT. Last year we got a call where a guy was DUI and had been pulled over. The cop stepped out of his car and the dude took off. He blew a red light going really fast and hit two 15-year-old boys that were walking home after gentlemanly escorting a pair of females back to their own homes. They were hit so hard they flew over a hundred feet through the air from the crosswalk and left bloody skid marks on the ground. Their jackets, shoes, and I think a hat were strewn about, leaving a trail behind their flight path. One boy was alive when EMS got there. The other boy was pronounced dead on arrival. We, the fire department, got the whole tarps up to protect the delicate eyes of the public from seeing a dead body, and after four cold hours and a lot of coffee, load the bodies up for the coroner. He looked like a nice kid with an honest face, from what I could see of it. He had blood substantially through his scalp, eyes, mouth, and nose, and a pool of steaming blood collected by the curb. His bones were thoroughly broken, and part of his knee was showing through the skin. The state police and coroner took pictures and did all that stuff with the spray paint and the numbers that she thought were just for TV. After all was said and done, we just had to spray the blood off the street with one of her hoses into the gutter. I see the marks and memorial every day because it was just at the end of my street. Sometimes I'll see young people run across the same intersection before the light changes when I'm driving and it'll make me choke and my stomach ache. Unfortunately, the other boy died en route to the hospital. The perpetrator was caught, however. My brother was a fire cadet in a pretty small town. One night in June, there was a particularly strong storm system rolling through, so the volunteer firefighters were sent out to storm spot which is look for and report any wall clouds or tornadoes developing, as was customary. While on spotting duty, a call came in that some cows were running loose in the street and a group of guys were needed to assemble and quickly round them up. The owner had called the fire department. So the fire department went over to the farm, my brother included, and trapezed around in this horrific thunderstorm chasing cows in the dark. The cows had gotten loose because they stampeded through the fence making securing them all that more difficult. The reason for the stampede? <laughs> there was a bear. So my brother, who had been treated for anxiety his entire life, found himself facing a tornado, lightning, a bear, and a whole group of scared cows all at once. And to wrap it all up, this was all in the dark. He said he sort of OD'd and became very zen about the whole scenario. It was really the turning point for him in getting his anxiety under control. So we got a call out to a house in Fremont for a man having a seizure. I forgot to mention I'm a firefighter slash EMT as well. We were right down the street, so we were first on scene within a minute. As I pull up, we see a little old lady nervously pointing to a man on her front lawn. The guy is disheveled looking, face down on the ground with his pants around his ankles. He's moving up and down in a rhythmic fashion. It took a little bit of time, but after a few moments, we figured out the man is making sweet love to a gopher hole in the lady's lawn. After that time, Fremont PD showed up, grabbed the guy, and threw him in the back of the squad car, fully aroused. The little old lady was pretty confused. I think she sort of knew what was happening, but didn't want to admit it. Unfortunately, the gopher was not available for comment. One of the more screwed up stories I've ever been on as a firefighter. So a schizophrenic woman had an episode the day that her boyfriend left her. She stabbed her eight-year-old daughter four times with an eight-inch kitchen knife. The girl survived, but was touch and go for a while. That one was a tough call. It had been a long day, an even longer week, and it was something like 85 degrees out. So I was already feeling pretty drained before this call. 
I'm a younger girl and don't have kids or anything, but like many others, I've never done too well with kid calls. On another call a few years ago when I was much newer, we had a two-year-old baby with terminal brain cancer seizing in the doctor's office. His mother was there crying and wailing. It took me a little while to get that out of my head, but the stabbing was definitely not among my favorites. Hey guys, it's Gotea here. I want to say thank you so much for listening to this video. And although there were some bad parts, there were also some humorous parts, which is always great to read. As you all know, I have uh, wrapped up my finals here at college, so I will be uploading a lot more uh, volume to this channel, which I am ecstatic about. So if any of you have any personal stories you would like me to read in one of my videos, please do not hesitate to send them to my email. Uh, linked in the description below, and I will be sure to include that in one of my storytelling episodes. <laughs> but other from that, thank you so much, and I'll see you mates in the next episode.